G'day, Starlo here. A few seasons back, I was introduced to the delights of a wonderful form of fly fishing known as lock style, and lucky enough to be shown the ropes by a couple of its finest exponents. Lock style fly fishing is done from a boat on a lake. It usually involves deploying a drogue to slow and control the vessel's drift before casting downwind ahead of the boat using anything from one to three flies, generally rigged on a long leader. Both floating and various forms of sinking fly lines are used and a range of retrieve styles are employed. I've got to say, it's one of the deadliest and most effective forms of trout fishing I've ever experienced. I made a YouTube video showing my early discoveries and learnings about lock style fly fishing and you can find the link to that video here on the screen or down in the comments below. I reckon it's well worth a look. Thanks to a couple of wetter and cooler than average years, our Australian mainland trout lakes have been fishing better than many of us can remember in a long, long time. So Joe and I have been making fairly regular forays to the high country to chase a few trout. On a recent visit to Lake Eukenbeen, we once again experienced some memorable action while casting flies from our drifting boat with a drogue deployed to slow us down. Yeah, oh, yeah, got him. Fish came to our flies with reliable frequency throughout the day, and while we didn't catch any of the lake's true monsters, we accounted for a string of very nice rainbows and browns across our couple of days on the water. These fish are fat, fit, and full of fight at the moment after those couple of good seasons, and I tell you what, they don't give up easily. They battle hard all the way to the landing net. <laughs> it's not hard to see why when you have a look at the condition that they're in too. We released a lot of the trout that we caught, but we also brought a few home to eat. And I'd like to share with you some of our favourite methods for preparing trout for the table. Let's kick off by looking at how I hot smoke trout. The first thing you'll need is a brine to soak your fish in. The key ingredient to this is salt, but I also like to add about the same quantity of brown sugar. The big question is, how much salt? Well, did you know that a potato will sink in fresh water, but float in salty water? <laughs> it's true. And the best advice I can offer is to add as much dissolved salt to your brining mix as it takes to float a potato, and about the same amount of brown sugar. Dissolve the two together in hot water and pour the mix into the brining tub. Stir it thoroughly. There we go, our potatoes floating. Perfect, time to start adding the trout. I intend to smoke these smaller rainbows whole, so in they go. I've cleaned them really thoroughly and done my best to remove every trace of blood. That's quite important. The slightly larger fish, I'll fill it first. Filleting trout's pretty easy and you can start at either the head or the tail. Just make sure your knife's sharp. Cut through the ribs and separate the fillet from the frame. How good does that flesh look? Add the fillets to the brine tub and make sure they're fully submerged. I like to leave mine in the brine for one to three hours, much longer and I reckon they get a bit too salty. While the trout are in the brine, get your smoking fire going. You can use a barbecue, a purpose-built smoker, or as I am, a backyard pizza oven. I really prefer to use wood charcoal rather than briquettes as it's got less of that chemical fumey smell, although today I've actually got a bit of a mix of both happening. When it comes to smoking chips or sawdust, there are so many varieties on the market. Try a few and find out which you prefer. Personally, I quite like the flavour of hickory. Let your fire burn down to a nice bed of coals. And once the fish have been in the brine for an hour or two, pull them out and let them dry. Patting them dry with absorbent paper or putting them under a fan really speeds this up. Arrange the dry, brined trout on a tray and scatter your smoking chips or dust on the coals. You can soak some of them in the fish brine first to make them smoke slower and last longer. Once the fish is in the smoker, close the lid or the door. 
there's not much to do now except sit back and enjoy a cold beverage and wait. <laughs> I'm actually multitasking this evening, cooking some butterflied lamb wrapped in alfoil at the same time as I smoke the trout. It usually takes anywhere from about half an hour to an hour to properly smoke the trout, depending on the heat of the fire and the size of the fish. Check them from time to time and add more smoking chips or dust to the coals if you need to. And that's really about it. Simple and delicious smoked trout. Yum. Gravlax is a Scandinavian or Nordic method for curing trout and salmon using salt and sugar, and the end result is delicious, especially when served with various mustard sauces, horseradish or tartare sauce. My preferred ingredients for making Gravlax include salt, sugar, lime or lemon, some vodka, fresh dill, not the dried stuff, cling wrap, Oh, and a heavy rock. <laughs> you'll see why. Of course, you'll need some fish too. A fresh, wild-caught trout's best, especially one with nice orange flesh, like this Yukon bean rainbow. Fillet the fish well and make sure there's no blood left on the fillets. I've arranged all my ingredients here in bowls. I've finely chopped the fresh dill, diced up a couple of thin slices of lime, skin on, poured out a nip of vodka, and mixed my salt and sugar at a ratio of about two parts sugar to one part salt. Lay cling wrap across a large plate and arrange your fillets on it, then spoon or brush on the vodka, wetting down both fillets with it. Next, tip on the sugar and salt mix, concentrating it on the thickest central parts of the first fillet, just like I'm doing here. You can add some cracked black pepper too if you like. Put plenty on. You don't need quite as much on the other fillet. You'll see why in a minute. As you can see, the vodka helps the sugar and salt stick to the fillets. The chopped fresh dill goes on next. Again, concentrate it on the thicker central sections of the first fillet. Pile it on nice and generously like I'm doing here. You don't need to put any dill on the other fillet. Next, Add the finely diced lime or lemon. Try to keep this on top of the dill so it doesn't make direct contact with the fillet. If it does, it'll start to cook the flesh and create little discoloured spots and patches. Look, it won't affect the taste of the finished gravlax, but it doesn't look as good. Again, you only need to put the lime or lemon on the first fillet. And here's why. Because we're now going to take the other fillet and neatly place it flesh to flesh on top of the first one. Make sure the two fillets fit together snugly. Then fold the cling wrap over and cover the two fillets as tightly and neatly as you can. Wrap them really snugly, excluding as much air as you can get out. Lay another sheet of cling wrap over the plate and repeat the process to make a double wrapping. The tighter you can wrap the fillets, the better. Now, some people are happy to leave it at that, but I like to take it a step further and follow the Nordic tradition by placing a cutting board or something similar on top of the wrapped fillets before adding a heavy weight, such as a brick or a rock, or even two rocks. The weighted fish then goes into the fridge for a minimum of 48 hours, and ideally you should turn the fish package and drain any juice from the plate every 12 hours or so. Unwrap the fillets after two days in the fridge and scrape off some of the dill and the lime pieces. You'll find the flesh has become quite firm, dense <laughs> and absolutely delicious. If you've done it properly, the gravlax should be moist with no outer crust and not too salty. I like to arrange slices of the finished gravlax on plain crackers. Don't be afraid to leave some of the chopped dill on it too as it really adds to the flavour. Spoon on some mustard sauce, horseradish, hollandaise, tartare, whatever you fancy, <laughs> and enjoy. And finally, perhaps the easiest way of all to cook trout is to simply bake them whole, wrapped in aluminium foil. To do this, clean the trout thoroughly, dry it with some absorbent paper, lay it on the alfoil and add a generous amount of butter under, on top and inside the gut cavity of the fish, along with some salt and pepper. 
If you like, squeeze a little lemon or lime juice over the top of the fish as well and pop a couple of lemon segments inside. Then wrap the whole package tightly in the foil. Two layers is a good idea. And place it in an oven preheated to about 160 or 170 degrees Celsius for roughly 40 minutes, depending on the size of the fish. You can also cook trout this way on the coals of a campfire or in a camp oven. Unwrap after 30 or 40 minutes and check, and if it's cooked through, you can dive in and enjoy. The skin will easily peel off, and you can lift the flesh away from the bones with a fork. <laughs> Yum. Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines and bon appetit. Oh, and if you liked this and want some more, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and consider shouting me a beer. Find out how in the comments below. Cheers. <laughs>